Hello, this is Dr. Stanley Kim again. I'm still working at Norris Cotton Cancer Center in Keene, New Hampshire. Today, we will discuss human papilloma virus associated oropharyngeal cancer. We know head and neck cancer is a cancer of elderly men who smoke and drink. But for the past 20 years, we've seen more head and neck cancer occurring in young men who never smoke or drink. In 2007, a scientist team at Johns Hopkins University discovered and published that human papilloma virus infection of the mouth is associated with oropharyngeal cancer. And the instance of this oropharyngeal cancer caused by human papilloma virus is rising alarmingly fast that now it surpasses that of cervical cancer of women, which is also caused by human papilloma virus. Luckily, the prognosis of this human papilloma associated oropharyngeal cancer is much better than uh, smokers smoking associated head and neck cancer of the elderly man. Because this cancer responds to chemotherapy and the radiation therapy well. We will discuss more in detail and thank you for watching. Most head and neck cancers are squamous cell carcinoma and uh, this cancer was considered as a cancer of elderly men who used to smoke or drink. However, it is increasingly seen in younger non-smokers due to oral human papilloma virus HPV infection, which is strongly linked to sexual behavior, especially oral sex. HPV-associated head and neck cancer are, cancers are mostly occur in the oropharynx. Please look at this picture. Pharynx is divided into nasopharynx, oropharynx, and the hypopharynx. Oropharynx have the, uh, include the tongue base, tonsils, tonsillar fossa, posterior pharyngeal wall, and the soft palate. So HPV-associated uh, cancer is usually occur in the tonsil, tonsillar fossa, tongue base, or rarely soft palate. The incidence of HPV-associated oropharyngeal cancer surpassed the uh, HPV-negative cancer, now accounting for 80% of all. The most common oncogenic subtype of this HPV uh, virus is HPV-16, although other high-risk uh, subtypes like HPV-18 or other types can cause uh, HPV oropharyngeal squamous cell carcinoma. HPV cancer is a three, five, three to five fold more common in men than women. HPV positive cancer has a better prognosis than HPV negative oropharyngeal cancer because they respond better to chemotherapy and the radiation therapy. HPV vaccine may prevent uh, HPV oropharyngeal cancer and the CDC recommends HPV HPV vaccination for 11 to 12 year old children. HPV vaccination prevents new HPV infection, but it does not treat existing infection. The instance of HPV positive oropharyngeal squamous carcinoma is rising, as this uh, graph shows. It now, uh, this red. Uh, arrows can see that it was gradually and rather rapidly going up and surpassing those uh, cervical cancer now. And this is the uh, uh, electron microscope of HPV virus and the mostly occurs in the uh, tonsil, tonsillar fossa, tongue base and the, sometimes in the uh, soft palate. Patients with smoking-associated HPV-negative head and neck cancer usually have a pain, swallowing difficulty, and weight loss. But those with HPV-positive oropharyngeal cancer usually present with asymptomatic neck mass due to neck lymph node metastasis, and this neck mass is often cystic and soft. HPV-positive oropharyngeal cancer has a better prognosis than HPV-negative cancer, as we discussed in the previous slide, but HPV-positive smokers have a worse prognosis than non-smokers. Retropharyngeal lymphadenopathy uh, indicates the prognosis, but 
high pretreatment absolute lymphocyte count is a good prognostic sign. A good history and physical is important, asking the history of smoking, alcohol drinking, and a thorough examination of the oral cavity, pharynx, and neck is best done by ENT by office flexible uh, pharyngolaryngoscopy. But the most important diagnostic procedure is a fine needle aspiration, FNA, of the neck mass. Open ultrasound guided, especially when tumor is not evident at initial examination. But excisional biopsy should not be the first procedure for diagnosis because excision may disrupt the surgery plan when patients need to have a surgery later. FNA biopsy can distinguish metastatic squamous cancer from metastatic thyroid cancer or lymphoma. As I mentioned, HPV positive tumor is commonly cystic, so when the fluid is aspirated, the specimen need be sent for cytology. FNA can be repeated if the initial attempt is negative before you reluctantly uh, order excisional biopsy. When patients have a negative uh, lymph node, for example, not palpable neck mass or CT scan didn't show any obvious lymph node metastasis, sentinel lymph node biopsy is recommended. Pun endoscopy comprised of laryngoscopy, bronchoscopy, and esophagoscopy under general anesthesia is less commonly used as a PET CT scan is useful to detect the uh, synchronous primary tumor and the availability of outpatient biopsy by ENT uh, through a flexible laryngoscopy. But it's still used for squamous cell cancer of unknown primary site, especially with negative PET CT scan. Immunohistochemical study of P16 is a surrogate marker for HPV uh, positivity. In other words, when the uh, IHC study showed a positive P16, that means the tumor is HPV associated. But it can be a, a false negative. So the, if results is doubtful, for example, H, uh, IHC study of P16 is negative, but patients is non-smoker, is a younger patient, then you wonder that a uh, test is accurate. So you need to have a confirmation test with the real-time PCR or in situ hybridization. Once fine needle aspiration established the tissue diagnosis of squamous cell carcinoma, then we need to stage the tumor by imaging studies. Most frequently uh, with the CT scan of the primary site and the neck. It provides the uh, better uh, spatial resolution and is good to evaluate bone destruction and the cervical lymph node. Significant findings include tumor size one centimeter or larger, central necrosis, and the lymph node with the extra capsular extension. MRI is also good for sub-tissue evaluation, especially cartilage, neural tissue, skull base, and intracranial invasion. So it's a complementary to CT scan. PET CT scan is better in detecting the primary tumor, metastatic cancer, and occult distant metastasis, but it may not be sensitive for smaller tumor less than 0.5 centimeter, or cystic or necrotic lymph node. It may replace panendoscopy to find the second uh, occult secondary primary uh, lesion. Ultrasound is less sensitive in detecting lymph nodes than other imaging studies. Please look at this picture. This is the uh, MRI scan, the primary tumor here, tongue base, and the uh, lymph node metastasis in the neck. This is CT scan, and you can see the PET CT scan, it clearly shows that primary tumor and the metastatic lymph node. The staging system of HPV positive oropharyngeal squamous cell carcinoma is different from that of HPV negative cancer. The better prognosis of HPV positive cancer is reflected in the staging system. For example, when the patients have a lymph node metastasis up to four, it can be still staged as a stage one. However, in HPV negative patient, lymph node positive means stage three. 
Now, T0 means primary tumor not found. T1, the size of tumor, is up to 2 cm. T2, size 2 to 4 cm. In T3, tumor is bigger than 4 cm or extended to uh, epiglottis. T4 means tumor is moderately advanced local disease, invading larynx, tongue, muscles, medial pterygoid, heart pellet, or mandible. Now, lymph node metastasis. When the cervical lymph node metastasis is up to 4, it's N1. More than 4, N2. Now, distant metastasis, M. M1 means patient have a distant metastasis. Now, stage 1, tumor is up to 4 cm, T1, T2. And the lymph node metastasis up to 4 in number. In stage 2, uh, tumor up to 4 cm and the number of lymph node metastasis more than 4. Or tumor is a bigger like a more than 4 cm or local advanced tumor and the lymph node metastasis uh, up to 4. In stage 3, tumor is either 3 or 4 and uh, a lymph node more than 4 metastasis. In stage 4, uh, patients already have a distant metastasis, M1. In HPV negative oropharyngeal squamous carcinoma, the T staging is same, like a T1 uh, up to 2 cm or less, T2 up to 4 cm, T3 bigger than 4 cm or extension to epiglottis, T4 locally advanced disease. But the Lymph node staging system is different. In N2, uh, there is a single ipsilateral lymph node metastasis size 3 cm or smaller. In N2, the size is bigger than 3 cm but up to 6 cm. N3 is a bigger than 6 cm or uh, clinically positive uh, external nodal extension. And the M1 means distant metastasis. As we discussed in the previous slide, uh, stage 3, when the patients have a N1, just a single lymph node, it's already stage 3. But this is supposed to be stage 1 in HPV positive oropharyngeal squamous cell carcinoma. Before starting therapy, patients need to be evaluated for their nutritional status and uh, teeth condition. Because chemotherapy causes swallowing difficulties, pain, and uh, mucositis, and they may not be able to get a adequate nutrition. And the good nutrition is important as underweight BMI is associated with the worse overall survival. So many patients have a gastrostomy placement before treatment, treatment started, or a nasogastric tube. Those are uh, mostly for patients who are undergoing concurrent chemoradiation therapy, but patients with a radiation therapy alone may not need them. Feeding gastrostomy can be done by PEG, uh, percutaneous endoscopic gastrostomy by uh, a gastroenterologist, or PRG, percutaneous radiologic gastrostomy by interventional radiologist. Please look at this picture. A tube is inserted into the lumen of the uh, stomach by uh, endoscopic procedure or interventional radiology. And the tube is uh, protruding out of the uh, upper abdomen. But not everybody needs this feeding gastrostomy. When they compare with the uh, gastrostomy with the uh, nasogastric tube, there was no difference in complication rate or quality of life. And the uh, uh, frequently gastrostomy tube uh, can cause dependency later on, even after the uh, treatment is completed in 8 to 20 percent of patients. Aggressive oral nutritional support and the dietary counseling may provide a similar benefit to gastrostomy uh, tube feeding. For dental evaluation, uh, patients need to be uh, evaluated by a dentist. And if there is any cavities or other issues, they have to be taken, taken care of, including uh, teeth extraction. 
And the speech swallowing evaluation for patients already have dysphagia due to tumor is, uh, can be done by a speech therapist. Now let's discuss treatment for early stage, the tumor uh, four centimeter or smaller without lymph node metastasis. In general, there is no difference in treatment between HPV positive and HPV negative cancers. But because of better prognosis of HPV positive cancer, less intense treatment options are recommended for better organ function preservation and the less toxicity and many clinical trials in progress. For those tumors, smaller tumor without lymph node metastasis, the treatment options include minimally invasive surgery or radiation alone. Concurrent chemoradiation therapy is not necessary in this case. Minimally invasive surgery include transoral robotic surgery or transoral laser microsurgery. Please look at these pictures. Transoral robotic surgery, the surgeons control the robotic arm remotely and they remove the uh, uh, tumor. Transoral laser microsurgery uses the uh, uh, special laser machine to uh, target that tumors. Those are indicated for well lateralized tumor, such as tonsillar tumor rather than tongue-based tumor, because tongue bases are more on the centrally located than uh, tonsil, without significant sub palate involvement. And the radiation therapy alone is also frequently done using IMRT, intensity modulated radiation therapy technique, to minimize the uh, 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 normal tissue around the tumor. Ipsilateral radiation therapy may be appropriate for well-localized tonsillar tumors with a less than one centimeter tumor invasion into the adjacent tissues. It includes the neck radiation for potential microscopic lymph node metastasis. When a patient with a smaller tumor has a single lymph node metastasis, the size three centimeter or smaller, the treatment options include the radiation therapy alone, concurrent chemoradiation therapy, and the surgery. Before you make any decision, uh, you need to check for uh, uh, adverse features. Why? When the patients have adverse features, concurrent chemoradiation therapy is the choice. Otherwise, patients can have radiation therapy alone or surgery. What are those adverse features? Patients is an active smoker or history of heavy smoking in the past, or tumor is endophytic, is infiltrated and uh, ulcerated. Involved lymph nodes has the extra nodal extension. Highly suspicious or clustered small lymph nodes. Retropharyngeal lymph node involvement at level four or five. Please look at the picture. Level four and five are lower cervical lymph nodes or any suspicions above uh, adverse features are found. Then concurrent chemoradiation therapy should be done. Otherwise, uh, radiation therapy alone or surgery. Special surgery uh, if tumor can be resectable without, uh, with the negative surgical margin. But sometimes after the surgery, pathology may find positive surgical margin or other features of advanced disease like extra nodal extension or multiple lymph node metastasis. In that case, radiation therapy alone or adjuvant concurrent chemoradiation therapy are given after surgery. For advanced stages like a bigger tumor, T3, T4, meaning tumor size bigger than four centimeter or local advanced disease or advanced tumor and the size of lymph node metastasis bigger than three centimeter or has extra nodal extension or a multiple lymph node metastasis, then concurrent chemoradiation therapy is the choice of treatment. What if surgery and the concurrent chemoradiation therapy? It did not improve five years uh, disease-free survival when compared with the chemoradiation therapy alone in both HPV positive and negative patient. 
Induction chemotherapy is sometimes given before chemoradiation therapy or surgery, but it did not improve survival in several clinical studies. So it's not generally used for HPV positive or a pharyngeal squamous cell carcinoma. For elderly patients aged over 70 or frail patients with a multiple comorbidities, radiation therapy alone is recommended. Concurrent chemoradiation therapy in this case may result in toxicity and the worsened prognosis. When you give a concurrent chemoradiation therapy, what kind of chemotherapy do you use? In this case, the chemotherapy is used as a chemosensitizer, mostly cisplatin 40 mg per square meter every week for seven weeks is the preferred dose for definitive chemoradiation therapy. However, since HPV positive oropharyngeal squamous cancer has a better prognosis, they may need to have a lower dose cisplatin at 30 mg per meter square uh, every week for six con concurrently with the radiation therapy. But it's still not uh, uh, standard therapy at this moment. When patients cannot have cisplatin, docetaxel 15 mg uh, per meter square every week for maximum seven uh, treatments improved two year over survival when they compared with the radiation therapy alone. Carboplatin may be used if patients cannot receive cisplatin, but whether it is as effective as cisplatin is not clear. Satuximab was definitely inferior when compared with the uh, cisplatin, so uh, we don't use the cetuximab as a chemosensitizer for, with the, for concurrent chemoradiation therapy anymore. Immune checkpoint uh, inhibitor immunotherapy drugs such as pembrolizumab or avelumab can be used with a chemoradiation therapy, but is still under uh, investigation. It's not the standard therapy yet. After concurrent chemoradiation ther therapy, further treatment is not indicated. For early detection of recurrence and metastasis, it's important to follow the patients after definitive therapy. Although it may be difficult to distinguish recurrent tumor from a second primary tumor, for HPV negative smokers head and neck cancer, lung and the esophagus as well as head and neck area are the common second primary sites. And the lung is the most common metastatic site. For HPV positive uh, cancer, distant metastasis is much less common than HPV negative cancer. At the follow up visits, we uh, examine and check for any suspicious local recurrence and distant metastasis, radiation induced hypothyroidism by uh, ordering TSH. Nutritional status, G2 dependency, patients may need to have uh, dietary counseling. Dental health, osteonecrosis, post-radiation carotid artery atherosclerosis by examining, listening the carotid artery or by ordering ultrasound. Obstructive sleep apnea and encourage smoking cessation because smokers has a worse prognosis and encourage to discuss uh, discontinue alcohol drinking. ENTs often follow the patients uh, and the two fiber optic nasopharyngolaryngoscopy. Recently, plasma circulating tumor HPV DNA is a, uh, a promising biomarkers. Testing for this plasma circulating tumor HPV DNA every six to nine months after the uh, treatment show the high prediction rate for recurrence. Although it's not uh, FDA approved yet, it may be used widely. How often you follow the patients? For the first year, every one to three months, then for the next year, following year uh, every two to four months, for year three to five uh, every four to six months. PET CT scan at three months after radiation or chemoradiation therapy, it's, uh, uh, it will show the, uh, the treatment uh, response. 
If the patients have a surgery, it can be done at first six months. Most recurrence occurs within two years after the definitive treatment. And the median time to detect the radiological recurrence and the secondary primary tumor for HPV positive uh, cancer is six months. And the PET CT is more sensitive than CT scan. Therefore, imaging study at three and six months after definitive uh, therapy may be necessary. However, screening imaging, regular screening imaging studies for asymptomatic patients are controversial. For example, HPV positive cancer has a low risk of distant metast distant recurrence. So routine CT or PET is not routinely recommended, although some other uh, experts uh, do that to detect the uh, early resectable metastatic lesions. When locally recurrent disease is found, the first step is to do metastatic workup with a PET CT or CT chest, abdomen, and pelvis or MRI. If distant metastatic lesions are not found, then it's good to distinguish recurrent local disease from a second primary tumor because the second primary tumor has a better prognosis than recurrent disease. If feasible, salvage surgery is the best choice because it provides the best prognosis, for example, 70% of two-year recurrence-free survival rate for recurrent stage one or two disease by transoral robotic surgery, transoral laser microsurgery, or even open reconstructive surgery. During that uh, resecting the primary tumor, prophylactic bilateral neck dissection is done for a high risk occult lymph node metastasis. Otherwise, uh, ipsilateral lymph node dissection for clinically negative lymph node disease. Postoperative radiation therapy is given if the patients had no previous radiation therapy. But for patients with a previous radiation therapy, interstitial bracket therapy or intraoperative radiation therapy may be given to uh, prevent the uh, toxicity to the tissue where the radiation was given in the past. After the surgery, postoperative irradiation and the chemotherapy may help the recurrence, but at the expense of toxicity, and it did not help overall survival. When the surgery is not feasible, then you need to re-irradiate re with the chemotherapy. Carboplatin or paclitaxel combination is often used. And the stereotactic body radiotherapy uh, may be considered. The, uh, this irradiation uh, causes toxicity such as radiation necrosis, mucosal ulceration, bleeding, or a cutaneous fistula, carotid artery blowout, and even death. And the palliative debulking surgery is done to relieve tumor-related symptoms. When uh, local salvage therapy is not feasible, then treat uh, as a metastatic disease. For metastatic disease, there are many different treatment options. We can use chemotherapy, especially platinum, in combination with 5-FU or docetaxel, single agent like a methotrexate, immunotherapy such as pembrolizumab or nivolumab, anti-EGFR monoclonal antibody targeted therapy such as cetuximab with or without chemotherapy, surgery and radiation therapy including stereotactic body radiotherapy or stereotactic radiosurgery for brain metastasis. Before uh, making a treatment decision, there are factors to consider. When the recurrence occurred, when the recurrence occurred within six months after the last platinum chemotherapy, then the tumor is platinum resistant. Then you can't use the platinum. Instead, we use immunotherapy or non-platinum chemotherapy or cetuximab. But if the tumor recurred after six months of less platinum therapy, then tumor is platinum sensitive, then 
uh, platinum chemotherapy is the choice. And the tumor has to be uh, tested for PDL1 uh, scores, combined positive scores. If the PDL1 score is a very high, then immunotherapy, mono single immunotherapy can be used. But if it's barely positive, then combination of immunotherapy and the chemotherapy is usually the choice. But if there's negative, then chemotherapy or cetuximab is used. We also have to check the tumor is HBB positive or negative because when HBB positive, nivolumab is more effective. And also, uh, how many metastatic lesions patients have? Are they resectable? If it's resectable, then surgery is used. If it's not resectable by surgery, still we can use radiation therapy uh, targeting those few metastatic lesions. And what is the physical condition of patients? If it's too frail, then we use more palliative supportive care. I'd like to introduce a landmark study, Keynote 48 trial. Almost 900 patients with recurrent and or metastatic head and neck squamous cell carcinoma are included. Treatments, three different treatments were compared. Pembrolizumab single immunotherapy versus pembrolizumab with a chemotherapy the cisplatin and 5-FU versus cetuximab with a chemotherapy. And the patients were followed for 30 to 34 months. When the tumor has a PDL1 score less than one, then a single pembrolizumab immunotherapy was not as good as cetuximab with a uh, chemotherapy or pembrolizumab with a chemotherapy. So when the tumor is less, PDL1 is less than one, uh, we have a choice. We can give pembrolizumab with a chemotherapy or cetuximab with a chemotherapy. Their overall survival was 11.3 months. And when PDL1 score is higher, 1 to 19, then Pembrolizumab single immunotherapy yielded 11 months of over survival. It's pretty reasonable. And when the chemotherapy is combined to the uh, pembrolizumab, the over survival was even better to 13 months. But there are some patients who cannot take the uh, uh, chemotherapy, like uh, elderly patients or other comorbidity. Then pembrolizumab single therapy was reasonable uh, choice. When the PDL1 score is 20 or higher, then pembrolizumab monotherapy yielded the best oval survival 15 months. So depending on the PDL1 score, we know what are the uh, better treatments for those patients. For platinum resistant disease, the best option is immunotherapy using pembrolizumab or nivolumab. When pembrolizumab was compared with the standard of care using metotrexate or docetaxel or cetuximab, the median over survival was over eight months versus 6.9 months. And this superiority of immunotherapy was seen in nivolumab as well. When it was compared with the standard of care, the overall survival was eight months versus about five months. And this survival benefit was only seen in PDL1 positive patients, 1% or above. And also, the survival benefit was better in HBB positive patients, 9.1 months, than HBB negative uh, cancer, 4.4 months. One thing that we need to remember is the uh, that the nivolumab improved the overall survival among those without prior cetuximab therapy. So when patients already had a cetuximab treatment in the past, then uh, pembrolizumab is better than nivolumab. Cetuximab can be used as well 
alone or with the chemotherapy. When the chemotherapy was combined with the cetuximab, then after six cycles of cetuximab and the chemo, maintenance therapy will be uh, uh, given with the cetuximab alone until disease progression. The dosage need to be uh, remembered. 400 mg per meter square loading dose one week before chemotherapy or radiation therapy, then 200 mg uh, meter square every week. Or you can give 500 mg meter square every two weeks. The cetuximab toxicity is kind of a, a uh, uh, different than other chemotherapy. Low magnesium levels and the uh, skin reactions like a severe acne kind of skin rashes and the sepsis. The most common site of metastasis is the lung. The best results comes by surgical resection of those metastatic lung lesions up to three lesions. That yielded a long-term survival, five-year survival of 30 to 35%. When surgically not resectable, then stereotactic body radiotherapy can be used to target that metastatic lesions. A small study showed a comparable results of the uh, uh, surgical resection. A, an interesting study pub was published last year. When patients have a multiple lung metastasis, we usually give uh, immunotherapy like a nivolumab. A research, researchers thought that when you treat the one of those metastatic lesion and uh, uh, give immunotherapy, the remaining metastatic lesion may disappear, which is uh, Epscopal effect. However, this did not happen. So whenever you treat those lung metastatic lesions, if you decided to resect or ablate with a, a stereotactic body radiotherapy, complete removal of those uh, metastatic lesion is necessary, and the followed by uh, uh, nivolumab. However, no study available to assess the benefit of adjuvant therapy following surgical resection of all metastatic lesions. And the second primary cancer can be seen in those patients with an instance of 9 to 23% at 20 years. And HBB negative smokers have a higher risk of secondary, second lung uh, primary uh, cancer. In HBB positive patient and the cancer, the common sites of second primary cancer is not the lung, it's more larynx, hypopharynx, or oral cavity. But HPV positive oropharyngeal squamous lung squamous cell carcinoma patients have a lower instance of second primary malignancy, and the survival rate is higher than HPV uh, negative cancer. I sometimes see patients with a neck mass who are referred after fine needle aspiration revealed metastatic squamous cell carcinoma, so-called metastatic squamous cell carcinoma of the cervical lymph node of unknown primary site. When the metastatic lymph nodes locate in the upper or mid neck, usually the primary site is in the neck, head and neck, and the less commonly lung, esophagus, skin, thyroid, and the salivary gland. When that tumor is associated with uh, HPB, the primary site's usually in the oropharynx, as we know. And the ENT will perform fiber optic nasopharyngolaryngoscopy in search of any primary uh, tumor. And then CT MRI or PET CT scan is done to find the primary site and the other metastatic lesions. How we manage those patients? We treat those patients as a head and neck primary cancer with a concurrent chemo radiation therapy. But if distant metastasis were found, then uh, we need to test the tumor uh, tissue for PDL1, uh, MMR, and the tumor mutational burden for uh, systemic therapy with the immunotherapy, with or without chemotherapy. And when a few lesions are found, then therapy plan for oligometastasis, such as surgical resection or uh, ablation, may be considered. 
When the metastatic lymph node locates in the lower neck or supraclavicular area, the primary site is mostly in the lung and the less commonly head and neck, esophagus, and the skin and thyroid gland. Again, fiber optic nasopharyngeal laryngoscopy is done by ENT, and the fiber optic bronchoscopy can be considered if you suspect the uh, uh, lung cancer, and uh, sometimes upper endoscopy in search of esophageal primary. Again, CT MRI or PET CT scan down to find the primary site and other metastatic lesions. In those patients are treated the same as upper neck lymph node metastasis if there is no primary sites found and no metastatic lesions detected. However, patients with isolated supraclavicular lymph node metastasis most commonly have a lung primary and they should be treated like a locally advanced squamous cell lung cancer. You know, uh, please review my uh, uh, lung cancer YouTube lecture. The prognosis of HPV positive oropharyngeal squamous cell carcinoma is good. Three year oval survival of a local regional uh, cancer, including lymph node metastasis, was over 80% in HPV positive cancers but 57% in HBB negative smokers related oropharyngeal cancer. National Cancer Institute data of SEEP 2012 to 2018 time period, all stages five year survival was about 70%. This is a beautiful picture of New Hampshire Taken near the place I'm working now, I like to read the verse of Psalm in the hope that all cancer patients have a confidence in conquering their cancer. I will answer your cry for help every time you pray, and you will feel my presence in your time of trouble. I will deliver you and bring you honor. I will satisfy you with a full life and with all that I do for you for you will enjoy the fullness of my salvation. Thank you for watching.